Welcome back. Uh, don't eat anything, don't drink anything, and don't touch anything. That's the advice being given to Ukraine's negotiators uh, as they were headed to Turkey for peace talks. There have already been reports that in early March, three negotiators were poisoned during talks in Kyiv. Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich and two Ukrainian negotiators fell ill all at the same time. All three men have since recovered, but not one of them uh, was examined by a forensic expert in time to detect toxins, so there's no way to prove if they were poisoned. But there is a dark history of the Russian state and Vladimir Putin using poisons against their enemy. In 2020, Alexei Navalny, the leader of Russia's opposition party and a fierce Putin critic, barely survived a murder attempt allegedly ordered by Putin. It involved a military-grade nerve agent called Novichok. In 2018, three people in England, including former Russian double agent Sergei Skripal, they were injured and another person died after exposure, exposure to Novichok. The toxin was discovered in a disguised perfume bottle. In 2006, Russian spy and Putin critic Alexander Litvinchenko, he was killed in London after his tea was spiked with a radioactive metal called polonium. And in 2004, Viktor Yashchenko, who was running against a pro-Russian candidate in Ukraine, well, he mysteriously fell ill and was disfigured as a result of dioxin poisoning. The Russian government has always denied involvement in the poisonings, but it always seemed to be Putin's critics who ended up being targeted. I want to bring in Jonathan Sanders. He spent decades in Russia as the Moscow correspondent for CBS News and is currently professor of journalism at Stony Brook University. So, Professor Sanders, um, your latest book is The Russians Emerge. You, you are very savvy about Putin's ways. Why would poisoning be a method of choice? Because it's so traceable. Or is that the point? Get the message out there. Let people see your handiwork. Well, I think it's because it's in a fine tradition of spycraft. When Vladimir Putin was still in high school, still studying German, watching in his little communal apartment in St. Petersburg, watching the spy stories on TV in black and white, there occurred in 1970 a remarkable case in which a Bulgarian diplomat crossing a bridge in London, someone came up behind him with an umbrella, poked it in his leg, and and put ricin in his leg and he died shortly thereafter. This has been something the Kremlin has been up to for a long time and they have a whole range of chemical agents. The man you talked about who was poisoned with dioxin, his skin, his face looks like the, the surface of the moon now. Uh, I had a friend, Yuri Shekhochikin, who was investigating corruption of a group of KGB agents who had started a, a, a chain of stores called the Fat Whale and were laundering money through the Bank of New York. And all of a sudden, Yuri, who was very allergic to things, we always used to joke about how when the trees would be in blossom, we had to have five or six more handkerchiefs. He was taken to the hospital. They, see, they gave him something that he was either allergic to or radioactive, and they sealed his medical records records and the medical records disappeared. Anna Politkovskaya, the famous investigator from Novaya Gazeta, who was investigating the, the Chechen cases, well, one, just before she died, she was investigating poisoning of a whole classroom of children in Chechnya. And before they uh, gunned her down as she was bringing groceries, she was going to investigate the, and see if she could help at the Beslan school siege. And the stewardess on the air flight gave her a glass of tea or lemonade. And she got so violently sick, she couldn't continue. So they like poison. It's like a very personal kind of death agent. Um, I was threatened with death by a Chechen warlord. But at least he said he was simply going to cut my head off. Oh, your line of work. Uh, I'm glad you're a professor now and a good one at that, especially with all of those um, examples right at the top of your head. Jonathan Sanders, thank you for, for being with us and thank you for that sort of long list of Putin's playbook. It's, it's chilling, but I do understand now why they're telling the negotiators to not eat, drink or touch anything. Ashley, be careful what you drink. <laughs> hope I'm okay here on the northeast of the U.S. Uh, Professor Sanders, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.